Hello from Ibrox after the week that was and what an eventful few days it's been for Rangers teams across all levels. We'll look back on the best of the action and we'll start gearing up for the few days to come where the action doesn't stop. So much to cram into this episode, including hearing from these stars. So welcome along to the Rangers preview show. Some brilliant names coming up across this episode. We'll also be hearing from Giovanni van Bronckhorst dishing the dirt, as it were, on his former Dutch teammate, Ruud van Nistelrooy, who'll be in the dugout, obviously, as the PSV manager. And as you saw there, we'll be hearing from an old friend, Arthur Newman, is also going to be coming up on the show. Well, with me in the studio for the first time this season, it's welcome back, but as I say, for the first time this campaign, Shelley Kerr, hello. Hello. Enjoying I'll the weather? Absolutely. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I enjoyed the show, the first show, it was excellent. Thank you very much, thank you very much. After uh, dishing the dirt last week on not having a branded clipboard, I'm pleased to say I've got a branded clipboard. We've got our mugs as well, so we're all set, really. <laughs> for uh, we're, we're all set for the afternoon in. Um, it's great to see you though, Shelley. What have you, you made of the, the performances so far from, from Rangers this season? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's always going to be tough at the start of the season because you've got new players coming in. Um, they have to settle in and right away you're expected to obviously win games in the league and obviously trying to get into the Champions League group stages. Um, tough first game mm -hmm. against Livingston and then obviously the, the second game against Union but what a response um, in terms of the Kilmarnock game and the Union game midweek. Um, fantastic, great win and you know sets the team up really, really well going into the game against PSV. That's the thing. We sat here last week when Alan Hutton was in the studio wondering what the response would be from Rangers after what happened over in Belgium. But Giovanni van Bronckhorst said the performances would improve. They certainly have, as have the results. What did you think of that display on um, Tuesday night against U Union SG? I, I think it was brilliant. Um, I didn't get a chance to watch the game live. But I watched it back and um, I thought the tempo of play, obviously, you see this leads to the kind of first goal here, a, you know, a blatant handball. You won't get a handball that's <laughs> yeah. any more blatant. And, you know, who else to take responsibility and step up? And it's a well-taken penalty, as we've seen, you know, James Tavernier do many, many times. And that, for me, that goal was at a critical time, just before half time. And, um, you know, they built on that, um, some superb play. Um, obviously, see Scott Arfield there, but I, I mentioned uh, Cholak here because he's new in as a striker. Alfredo Morelos obviously set the benchmark there in terms of scoring goals, but he anticipates really well. He's got off to a good start, and I think there's more to come from him. You know, the ball in here um, for the third goal um, from Barisic, but what a leap that is. <laughs> I mean, incredible. The timing, the ball's looping. I don't know what the goalkeeper's doing there, but that is a brilliant finish because the timing he's run, but the height that he gets up, what a spring it is. And um, a fantastic goal. And you can see him at the end of the game getting really emotional as yeah. well. But I thought it was a terrific performance in general. I'll tell you why, because the speed and the tempo of the play was excellent. And when you play against a team that are going to come here, you know, sit in and be nice and compact. You need to move the ball quickly. And, you know, Rangers will come up against, more often than not, teams that do that. Um, maybe not so much in, in, on the European stage, but certainly in the league. And um, I thought from the start of the game, even from John McLaughlin, the way that they moved the ball, mm -hmm. you know, through the thirds and the tempo, that's what you need. You need to move the ball, whether it's side to side, into the wide areas, through the central area, but I thought they'd done it really, really well. And the way the new signings have settled and adapted to, to the play as well, I mean, you saw Tillman there at the end with that goal. What will that do for him now as he aims to kick on and, and really establish his career here at Rangers? 
it, do, it gives you confidence. It doesn't matter what level you're at as a player. Every player needs confidence. But, uh, you know, the experience that he had, obviously, playing the other night there and, you know, getting embroiled in the whole emotion of it, you know, this fan base is incredible. And you can see that's why he was getting emotional. But he's a good player. He's very talented. Um, you know, technique-wise, he's good. Um, you know, and you, you see the shots of him there. That's emotion because He's probably came to this club, and I think people, you know, when they sign with a club like Rangers, they don't, they underestimate, mm -hmm. you know, what the fan base is like. So you could see why he was getting emotional there, and that, if that for me is that pure, like, you know, it's almost that elation from the fans that he's got emotional. Of course, he gets his goal. It's, it's the third goal, obviously, to to get Rangers over the line there, but. Um, yeah, the emotions with football are just fantastic and no more so um, than that a home game at Ibrox, incredible. That's Craig Moore was in the studio for the game and he said afterwards, you know, that he has been impressed with the way Tillman seems to have coped with the pressure of the jersey, you know, coming up with a key goal, but as you mentioned there, absolutely overwhelmed really by, by the reception that, that they're getting. Yeah, yeah, for me, that's not just about scoring the goal, that's mm. hearing. I mean, the stadium, the, the atmosphere looked electric. I know my daughter was at the game and, um, you know, she explained how, how electric it was, but watching the game back, you could hear even the commentators talking, and, but that is sheer emotion from the mm. crowd. And, you know, the, the fan base here are instrumental, integral, especially at these, and on these big occasions. We've touched on Tillman there. Who else from the new signings has impressed you with the way they've settled in and adapted to, to playing in this Rangers team? I, I think, for me, Lawrence, I, I really like him. Um, in that midfield area, he can cut in from that left-hand side on his right foot. He's aggressive, but he's got c controlled aggression mm -hmm. um, as a midfielder. His first thought is to go forward. You get different, obviously, types of midfielders. You have midfielders that are more defensive, but he's, his all-round game is really good. Technically, he's very good. His deliveries, obviously, on set plays as well. You've seen him, like, obviously, taking corners as well. Um, I, I just really like how he settled in, and so early mm -hmm. into his Rangers career. But, you know, he's definitely going to be a big player. And the likes of Davis and you know even Morelos just coming back. There's still so much more to come from these players, isn't there? Especially Ben Davis, who again is another new signing. Uh, absolutely. You know, it'd be interesting to see how he fits into mm. the team. Obviously, he's arrived here, big expectations. Um, but but you know, you, you mentioned Alfredo Morelos as well. For me, you have to have at least two players for every position. You need to create a competitive environment and already the start of the season you've seen the rotation mm -hmm. and you need that when you're playing so many games. When you're a successful club, you need players that can create that competitive environment. So the signings I think have been fantastic, the recruitment's been great, oh, you know, you've got players coming back from injury as well and that's what you need. Mm -hmm. One consistency <laughs> that has carried on from last season is James Tavernier, the captain. He's already picked up where he left off with his goal scoring. Um, what about his you know, coolness under pressure to take that penalty, but also just his ability to, to keep leading the team on that stage? He's just, his record is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You know, every season, you know, certainly I speak about him all the time. And, you know, maybe he gets a bit of critique at times because he's in a defensive position, obviously, as a fullback. But what he gives the team going forward is just unbelievable. And, you know, that was a pressure penalty. Mm -hmm. You know, literally two minutes before half time. You know, every penalty is a pressure penalty, but the magnitude of the game, to get your team back into the game right before half time, it changes everything. And, um, you know, he's tucked the ball right in the corner. And we've seen him do it so many times. He can go to the left side, he can go to the right side. Uh, he's just been a phenomenal player. The reward for Rangers for getting through that tie is now a match over two legs with PSV Eindhoven Q us pulling out the contacts book and looking up our old friend Arthur Newman. Obviously it's not a contacts book because uh, we've not been on the blower but we've been on video chat with him. Uh, Andrew Dixon, a former familiar face around these parts, has been chatting to him. First of all, obviously the draw, um, two clubs that played massive uh, parts in your career. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about it? Are you a little bit torn about it or is this a draw that you wanted to see happen? Yeah, it was great because, uh, now what you said, I used to play for uh, PSV Eindhoven for six years and, of course, uh, for, for Rangers five years. And uh, then, uh, yeah, you watch both teams playing. You think, oh, if they 
going to play against each other, at least one team will reach the Champions League. So that's already uh, fantastic, you know, because uh, you, you want to perform on the highest level against the big teams in, uh, in Europe. And yeah, absolutely uh, sensational uh, what happened uh, this week there in the Champions League. Unbelievable for both teams. Yeah, obviously you say that on one side, you, at least one of them will get there, but I'm sure there's probably a little bit of you that's disappointed that they have come together at this stage. I'm sure you would rather well, have to play in the groups. Yeah, I know that's true, that's true, because that's uh, what uh, what I experienced myself in uh, 1999 when uh, yeah, when we were in the, the Champions League and, of course, uh, PSV was in the same group uh, as, as Rangers. And it's really, really strange then because, yeah, what I said, I played it for six years, I signed for Rangers and uh, I got a lot of criticism because so why is he going to to Scotland? Rangers are not a better team than uh, than PSV Eindhoven. And by the time, uh, yeah, I could also sign for Atletico Madrid. There were some Italian teams uh, interested in me. But I promised Dick Advocat to join him. And that's the reason also why I actually went to uh, to Scotland and signed for Rangers. I didn't know a lot about the club. Uh, but then the good thing was as well uh, that when we played against PSV Eindhoven in 99, that uh, we beat him in Eindhoven 1-0 and we played him off the park uh, at Ibrox. And then that was the moment when everyone in Holland realized, whoa, what is this for a team? Uh, also uh, the atmosphere, uh, the quality of, of, of players we had in the squad. And that completely changed the, the view here in Holland for Glasgow Rangers. And that made it then so uh, so really special. And uh, of course, and, and then 10 years ago, we played against each other. And now again, and yeah, people, they know the club also because of the, the history from a lot of the, the Dutch players playing for, uh, for Glasgow Rangers. And it, yeah, that made this game so, so special now. Of course, uh, what you're saying there about the, the perception of, of Rangers changing in, in 1999 with those games, how do PSV feel about this tie? Do they feel confident? Do they feel that regardless of what Rangers have done, they're the team that are going to go through? Uh, yeah, well, they, they realise that they're going to play against the club uh, with, with the history. And it is quite funny as well because... Uh, after PSV, they, they beat Monaco uh, on, on Tuesday. Then after the game, uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy was giving an interview and he said, ah, now you're going to play against the uh, Rangers. Do you know anything about the team? He said, yeah, of course. He said, I played with PSV there. I think he played maybe with Manchester United there as well. And the first thing what he mentioned was uh, the atmosphere at Ibrox is absolutely sensational. Uh, he said that it's something that you have to experience yourself. And, and that shows you with all the big players from all over the world, uh, I've even spoken to players who played for the big teams in Europe, but they always remember the game when they come to uh, to Scotland, when they played Ibrox, and they said, that is something special. He said, the moment when you come in the park, he said, 50,000 people, uh, they're there behind the team. Uh, from the first to the last minute, they're singing songs, uh, they try to support the team. Yeah, and, and also for the, for the opponents, they, they look around sometimes and they think, what is happening here? Because I've played also against Barcelona with 100,000 people, but... The atmosphere there is nothing compared to to Ibrox. It is something special, and uh, and what I said, it says enough that Van Nistelrooy already mentioned it. He said well, when you go to Scotland, you play at Ibrox. He said uh, the atmosphere there will be fantastic, and some of the players are like Ooh, intimidated and they don't know exactly what's happening. So that's always an uh, yeah a positive thing. Tell me about the games in 1999. You touched on them earlier on. I think you missed the home game, didn't you? The 4-1 match, yeah. but you played in Eindhoven. What, what do you remember from those, those matches? It, it was really strange when I actually travelled to Eindhoven. I played it for six years. I was the last three years. I was captain there. I had a good relationship with the supporters. Then all of a sudden, uh, yeah, you play with, uh, with Rangers then against uh, PSV. Of course, in the beginning, you're a little bit nervous, but I always was nervous before the game. But when, once when the game started, I was up for it and I needed that adrenaline actually going through my body, you know, that you, whoop, you feel the heartbeat, you feel, whoop, I'm ready for it. And uh, yeah, it was fantastic that uh, that we beat him there. Uh, it was a great atmosphere, also a lot of Rangers supporters. And uh, yeah, I remember that uh, Georgie came on uh, as a sub and uh, yeah, he scored uh, the 1-0, of course, with his, uh, with his left foot, boom, uh, strike. Yeah, it was a fantastic feeling, of course, because then all of a sudden you beat, you beat your former team. Uh, we silenced all the, the criticisms there. Uh, also, the yeah, the, the, the journalists were quite positive about us. That they, they realized what kind of quality we had uh, in the team. And of course, uh, I was in the stand when we then uh, played the following week against. Uh, no, it was a couple of weeks later. But then we completely hammered them. We played them off the park, and yeah, it was a shame that I didn't play. But uh, yeah, it was great to watch that we beat him uh, four uh, four one. And uh, but I said for 90 minutes we were in control. Fantastic game. Yeah, and, and that's what you want uh, as a player, as a supporter as well. You want to see your team uh, winning games in the uh, Champions League. And yeah, that, that, that was a fantastic experience. And, uh, and what I said, yeah, hopefully these two games will be exactly the same atmosphere-wise. 
And uh, yeah, and then after two games, we will see who will go and reach the, the Champions League. Great to hear from Arthur Newman there. You can read more of what he's had to say in the Match Day programme on Tuesday as well. And Shelley, the way he was talking there, I mean, he, he sounds like he could still get a game. <laughs> the passion and the fire that he's got ahead of this fixture. It was interesting to hear him saying that he get really nervous. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a player of his calibre and his experience, but get nervous right up to the game kicked off. But, you know, he, he was a phenomenal player here um, at Ibrox and Rangers. And... Um, played alongside you know, a really, really good team. It was interesting looking at the footage there, seeing Neil, his movement to get out the way, uh, George Albert shot there, so a great right. movement from Neil McCann. Great movement getting out the way, exactly. <laughs> what a team that was though, that, that beat PSV over the both encounters in that group stage. But if you actually look at the teams now and how they're, they're balanced, how, how do you view this one from the outside ahead of this tie? It's very tough, um, obviously PSV, a really, really good team. I think they finished second mm -hmm. last year um, to Ajax. I think two points in it. Um, you've done your research well, Emma. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, this is not just throwing um, another show. But I think they're two teams that play in a similar way mm -hmm. from what I've seen. Um, they like to attack in the wide areas, but they've also got that option centrally as well. Um, obviously, during the week, I was following the game um, against Monaco and, you know, at one point Monaco look as if they're going through and then it has to go to extra time. But, yeah, you know, a couple of the goals that they scored, very good goals. Um, Luke de Jong looks like a, yeah. a, a, he's experienced, he's an experienced player. But um, I think in terms of the styles, I think they'll be very, very similar and I think it'll be a tough game. Yeah, a, certainly a tough game and an interesting dynamic as well with Rangers being at home in the first leg. You know, we've seen so often in the past, you know, the ties set up to bring it back to Ibrox. What do you think will be the approach from each team? Will PSV just be looking to get back to their own ground with, you know, a reasonable scoreline? And will Rangers be looking obviously to try and take a lead over there? It's very it's tricky, very, isn't it? It is tricky, but I think when you're at home, um, I mentioned it earlier and every time I'm here, I mention how important you know, the fans are and mm -hmm. the support and the atmosphere. The atmosphere is just, you, you hear everyone that comes here. We spoke about it often last season in the Europa League campaign, every team that came here, big, big teams coming here and, you know, being intimidated by the atmosphere. You need to use that to your advantage. Um, and it's, you know, it's a cliched thing where you talk about football. Of course, you want to go into the away tie, you know, having scored a goal or a couple of goals. But it, football isn't like that. I think the most important thing is it's sticking to that style, your mm. style of play. For me, this will be a tighter game. I think there'll be lots of transitional moments and both teams will need to be switched on to those transitional moments. I think that they'll both be play a similar type system. I, I think obviously PSV will come here. They will be very hard to beat, but there'll be a threat. Mm -hmm. There will be a threat from the counter attack. And there's no doubt as well that the, the strong Dutch connection with Rangers has added an extra dynamic to this, hasn't it? Because there's almost a little bit more interest on it now. I, I think that's an interesting dynamic because obviously Giovanni, he knows that league inside out. Yeah. He knows Dutch football. Um, and you've got obviously his counterpart, Ruud van Nistelrooy as well. So I, I think there's lots of different you know, challenges mm -hmm. around this tie, but the rewards at the end of it you know, are massive. It's huge. Well, speaking of Giovanni van Bronckhorst, let's hear what he has to say ahead of this tie. We've mentioned it. He's up against his old former uh, Dutch teammate, Ruud van Nistelrooy, in the opposite dugout. Let's hear from him now. He's been talking to Nick Thompson. First of all, and the most important thing is that we are in the playoffs and um, in contention to uh, to reach the group stage of the Champions League. We are uh, two games, uh, you know, away in, in achieving that. So, you know, playing against uh, against PSV was a club I, I I know very very well. Of course, with my time at Feyenoord, uh, you know, the staff who's there, you know, I I I I, uh, I played with. You know, Ruud and and uh, Vinistro, of course, and Andre Oyer, uh, Fred Rutten, who's his assistant. Uh, I was his assistant as, at Feyenoord in 2014-15. Uh, so uh, a lot of uh, familiar faces, and uh, but you know, it's uh, it's another tie for us. So we're going to prepare well for 
uh, this game against uh, against PSV and uh, you know give everything to uh, to uh, to reach the, the group stages. Yeah, Ruud van Nistelrooy you faced on the park back in 1999. You'll face him in the, in the dugout this time. Going back to that game, what 23 years ago? What are your, your memories of it and perhaps what it meant for for Rangers at the time to to score five goals against over the two games against a, a top quality team? Yeah, well, it was. Um, you know, a big, big game for us, of course. Uh, PSV were at that time, I think, they were one of the best teams in in uh, in Holland, um, and uh, we, we played against a quality side in in the Champions League, and uh, we won both away and home, which, of course, was a very good result for us. Special, of course, because we had uh, you know many Dutch players, and of course, uh, they got forget as a coach and and members of his staff, so. It's always special to to win the games, and uh, I remember the games really well. The, the home game where we um, dominated really well and uh, and won four one. And the way uh, York Alves strike uh, gave us the the three points and the win. So um, you know it's good memories back then. Uh, but then again, it's it's you know you won't say it, but so many years after that, you said 23 years. So. That's a long time, and uh, but still, you know the the goal is the same: is to uh, to to reach the the group stage and um, try to uh, overcome PSV uh, in two games. And Ruud van Nistelrooy, as you say, now making his way in in management. What have you made of, of what he's done with with PSV? And you know, like similar to yourself, trying to progress himself within the games. Yeah, well, manager. he's he's um, I think he's. Uh, he started uh, his, um, his 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 badges after a couple of years after after me, and uh, he did it quite. Uh, he didn't do it really quick, so he he took time in, in getting the experience. So first we was a coach in the in the youth system of PSV, then he had the second team, and and this year of course the first year as a as a head coach of the the first team. Uh, you know, he had a history with the club, you know, he's a great experience and now he's taking his first steps in management. So uh, it would be good to, to see him and and, uh, and Rudy is also, he's been a top player and uh, so we think he will bring the same character and attitude he has as a player, try to develop himself as a coach, try to push his players to become better. And um, I think he always had the standards when he was a player and and, and I'm sure he's, he's uh, bringing the message across uh, in keeping the standards to his players as well. We saw on Tuesday night there what a big impact the Rangers supporters had on the game and you know they're all being encouraged to wear blue this coming Tuesday. That's going to be some scene and they're, they're going to have some role to play again. Well, of course. I mean, it's uh, obviously we have a great support at home uh, and we felt that you know throughout the, uh, all the games we play in Europe, it's always special. You know, I had it as a player and as a as a as a coach as well. Now, there's special special uh, evenings, and um, you know, we are we are close, but still far away from the group stages. So uh, we will be determined and uh, and fired up to um, to get a, the, a really good result, and that's progress through the group stage after two games. Giovanni van Bronckhorst there giving his thoughts on his old teammate Ruud van Nistelrooy and Shelley. I don't know what they eat, but they haven't aged at all since they were actually playing. I want that diet. Yeah, you're looking <laughs> at them playing in a national team with each other and the management has certainly done wonders for them because they, they haven't aged at all. Uh -huh. and They still look the same, still look as if they could both Please. play as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's it like managing when you've got a, a familiar face in the opposite dugout? Oh, strictly business. Really? Yeah, yeah show the respect mm -hmm. which they will and you can see there on the VT the way that, you know, obviously Giovanni's talking about Ruud van Nistelrooy, but you have the respect, but it's business and your focus is solely on trying to get the best result for your team. Giovanni said it there in his interview, they're close, but they're still so far away from the group stages when you still have two ties to, to navigate. Does as a Dutch coaching squad and as a Dutch coach, it's an obvious statement to say that they will know more about PSV than PSV will know about Rangers. But how do you filter that down to your players? How do you choose what to tell your players in that instance? Yeah, that's that's the hard art of management. You know, what you know, but then what you disseminate to your players. And I say, I do think it will be a slight advantage for Giovanni, knowing that league, knowing the team, knowing the players inside out. 
and it will be what he needs to give the players in terms of information wise about their style. Yeah, tactically, every manager is well prepared in terms of how they, you know, compose and compile the game plan to get success. However, it's just drip feeding that extra added information that you have because of his knowledge of the Dutch league. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the thing that will be absolutely crucial gearing up to that game on Tuesday. Um, we'll look forward to St Johnston in just a moment. One other piece of business from the club's perspective is that they've announced uh, Dr Kerry Bowley has joined as a first team coach from the City Group. Um, he's got a PhD, Shelley, and let me just get this right, psychology and coaching science. We're seeing this more and more coming in to, to football, aren't we? It's, well, it's very much established in football now, but as a coach, how do you use that? How, how is that something that is, is then given to the players as a benefit? I mean, psychology and sport is huge. Um, the science part of it, you can see how far the games came. Um, you need to make sure that you can get every marginal gain possible. So to get more staff that are more educated, that are more experienced in certain areas, if it gives you that 1% is, is definitely worthwhile. And, you know, this club want the very best, the, the most professional approach to try and get success. So I, I think it's a really good appointment. Yeah, and coming in from the City Group where their methodology seems to be, well, seems to be working, let's put it that way, on the pitch so far, it can obviously only be a positive thing. Absolutely, and you know, you've got, yeah, I've got a group of people now, a group of support services that are integral. Mm -hmm. It's not just the football part of it, it's off the pitch as well, and everyone is unique, so you have to get people that, you know, make sure that they can bring the best out of those individuals because, because of that uniqueness, but, you know, the psychology, the science, the research, you know, the global trends in football, you, you need to move with the times. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck to, to Dr Kerry uh, Bowley, who has joined the club as a first team coach. Uh, we'll talk more about St Johnson in a moment, as I said, but let's turn our attention to the women's team because they're also gearing up for a Champions League qualifier against Ferenc Barros. Uh, Kirsty Howitt has started the season with an absolute bang and she's been looking forward to this one. We're all buzzing. There's a really good team spirit. Um, the ones that have came in, again, testament to them. They've fitted in really well and everyone's got around them and welcomed them. So. It's a really good uh, team spirit and we're just looking to kick on, obviously, successful season last season. Um, and we, we get our rewards at going into Champions League and the first time doing it for the women's team is great. Um, so, yeah, we just need to take each game as it comes and just enjoy it and, and take on the experience because it's, it's great to be able to do that. And how important is it for the squad to, to really test themselves at that le next level now? Yeah, well, obviously, that's um, what we all want to do. We want to be playing the best teams to, to obviously improve as a team and, and really tap, challenge yourself against the top side. So to be able to play in Europe, um, it's obviously the reward for winning the league, but it's a big game of ours. And yeah, we want to treat every game as the same as we would in the league and, and go and try and win every game. And it is a competition you're familiar with, having, having played in it with Glasgow City. What were some of them occasions like to be a part of? Yeah, well, it's obviously changed um, the format, but yeah, I've had some great memories playing Champions League for Glasgow City. and. Uh, we obviously got to the quarterfinals and yeah, what a feeling. Similar to the men's journey, um, maybe beating teams that you, you maybe shouldn't, but the team spirit um, got us there and yeah, we'd love to be able to do that um, for Rangers. Yeah, on a personal level, how excited are you to, to be back in the competition, obviously with Rangers this time? Yeah, delighted. Um, really, really excited. It's such a good competition, as I said. Um, play some big teams and get to challenge yourself against the best. So to be able to do that for Rangers, yeah, dream come true. And, Again, it's, it's a testament to us for doing so well last season. And how can you and, and the players with European experience help the squad heading into this tournament in Greece? Yeah, you know, the, the team's full of really experienced players internationally and teams, uh, girls, sorry, that have played in different teams in Champions League. So a lot of us will, will know what it's about. But yeah, there's obviously girls that haven't. So just ensure they know, you know, the standard's going to be a bit higher maybe than some of the league games. and. Yeah, you just need to all work hard for each other and, and really put in a good shift. It's going to be physical, a lot of European teams are, so yeah, just make sure that we, we do our analysis and we know that the challenge is going to be tough. And the squad play Fenn and Varos in the semi-final of the, the competition, what kind of challenge are you expecting from them? Yeah, obviously Hungarian champions, um, they're going to be a really decent side. Um, we haven't really touched them yet because we're obviously focusing on Aberdeen, but we'll, uh, we'll look at some clips from them and yeah, we're expecting a really tough challenge. Obviously, Greece as well is really warm, so the weather 
will be really warm, but yeah, we'll just um, treat treat a game, treat the game like it's uh, a league game, and yeah, just we're relishing the challenge. Relishing the challenge, says Kirsty Howitt there. Uh, the club's first ever European game for the women's team. What sort of a, a challenge do you face when, when you do play on the continent rather than coming up against a domestic team, Shelley? First of all, it's exciting times, isn't it? You know, obviously being champions last year, fantastic season. And that's the prize you get, mm -hmm. you know, a step into the Champions League. But it is different, albeit I would say that some of the players have already had experience but with other, other clubs teams, yeah. so that will help them that will stand them in good stead they've had a really good pre-season in terms of i think they went to pinatar which will be brilliant for, for them in terms of team bonding but again it's similar when you get new players in there's mm -hmm. been some new signings there and then you're expected to hit the ground running in a european competition but i, I I'm, I'm quite confident that they'll do well mm -hmm. um especially in those initial the initial tie um got off to a good start in the league so but it is a different challenge mm -hmm. it's the same as when you play club, club football and then you go into international football play in your club domestic league and then go to into europe it, it's tough and it's worth noting as well, if Rangers do make it to the Champions League, they will have earned it because they're playing the semi-final against Ferenc Vars. Then they have to play a final. And whoever wins that final goes into a playoff. So th there's a, a, a road ahead if they're to get that far. But again, it all will be in good stead because the fact that the club are in Europe is, is reward itself for, like you say, a fantastic season last year. Yeah, definitely. And you want to build on that. And, you know, you want to get through those initial stages mm -hmm. so that you can play play some of the bigger clubs you know that have been the dominant force in European competitions in the women's game and that's where Rangers as a club want to be so you know you'll come up against you know a hard format first of and foremost mm -hmm. but then you'll come up against hard teams as you go through the competition and and let's hope that they get through those early stages yeah. um, worth noting Leon are the current holders of the Champions League they beat Barcelona who'd won it the year before and when you you watch their matches I mean th this is top level performance isn't it in the women's game now there's a big gulf and mm -hmm. you know the investment you, know, you speak about leon they are um barcelona recently have invested you know they haven't until recently but leon you know are serial winners in the champions league but they've invested millions of pounds over the years so you know in, in terms of where rangers are at this moment in time they've done great you know obviously i think a big hurdle was winning the league yeah. and now you have to build on that. But I keep on saying that this club is a big global brand and players want to come here and play for the club. And in terms of recruitment, they will start to be able to recruit players from all over that want to play in Champions League. So mm -hmm. that's why you have to have that success. Yeah, well, they started the defence of their SWPL title at the weekend in quite emphatic style. Uh, we don't really have long enough on the show to show all the goals, but they managed to beat Glasgow women by 14 goals to nil. I mean, it's quite a signal of intent, Shelley. It is. I mean, <sighs> Glasgow women obviously have just came into the league with the, the teams increasing, obviously, to 12 this season. Um, I watched, obviously, the highlights and saw some of the goals. It was tough for Glasgow women. and. You know, what you don't want to see is, it's great, obviously, scoring as many goals, but you want to see competitive football, you want to see tight games, but it, you have to bear in mind as well that Glasgow women, you know, are, are probably training two or three times a week, whereas, you know, Rangers are obviously in a professional environment. But I think there were some brilliant goals. Um, that's a really, really good finish um, from Nick Dock. I think she should score more goals. I think that, that could be something that she adds to her game in terms of fullback position. But there were some cracking goals. Um, Lizzie Arnott, you know, can come in from both sides. Left foot finish this time. She's really two-footed. Lizzie, fantastic, intelligent player. And um, you know, we we spoke about um, obviously seeing Kirsty Howitt um, on the VT there. Mm -hmm. I think this was probably one of the best goals. And the reason I say that is because it's a brilliant team goal. I think it's Brogan Hay there that has a fantastic turn, and it's brilliant to see Kirsty Howitt obviously putting the ball in the back of the net after coming back from she that recovered long... really well, hasn't she? Yeah, I mean, it, the ACL injuries in, in, women's, in, in the women's game is tough and often, it's Catherine Hill, I think, getting her first goal as, as captain, captain yeah. as well, so <laughs> nice to see. 
but I think ACL injuries in, in female athletes is tough and sometimes it's it can be a reoccurring injury so it, absolutely brilliant to see Kirsty obviously score what was a fantastic team goal. Mm -hmm. And what a moment there for Georgie McCleary as well who's just signed her first professional contract with the club. Uh, yeah I, I mean I think it's brilliant there's a real mix um, obviously in terms of the recruitment you've got some season pros mm -hmm. from the Scottish League but you've got some international players that's come in but you've also got some fantastic talent coming through the pathway um, in terms of some of the young players and obviously getting their first professional contract it's it's what dreams are made of isn't it in terms of the yeah. women's game so it's great to see Kirsty McLean and, and Emma Watson also signing professional contracts and it's a landmark it's the first time it's happened for the club they've brought girls through the academy that have signed professional contracts so it is a watershed moment isn't it it's, it's significant this particular deal it's a message of intent mm -hmm. to others in Scotland because they're investing in not only you know players that are the best players to bring them to the club but the best young players so that's a real message of intent but it's also a message for young girls that want mm -hmm. to play football you know they have the same ambitions and the same aspirations as young boys that they can go and play with the club that they love they can get a professional contract and make a career out of football and we also saw there, we saw the fan shots from, from Broadwood. 700 fans turned out, fantastic crowd. How important is it that you know that Rangers have their own home now, that they can call Broad, Broadwood their, their home stadium? I think it is to grow the fan base because that's what you want. I think the facilities, obviously, at the training ground are magnificent, mm -hmm. um, as we all know. But I think that's the next thing for the club. You have to do it in stages, get the product right on the pitch, you know, so that it's entertaining and then the fans will come and watch. I think it was the most fans, yeah. you know, in the league over all the games. So again, that's another message of intent. I think obviously recently announced the season tickets for the that's first right. time as well. So long may it continue. I, I mean, what you don't want to see, uh, and I'm being honest here, you don't want to see score lines of 14 nil. You want yeah. you want to create that competitive environment. However, some of the goals were fantastic, and I'm sure that the spectators that where they are supporting mm -hmm. Rangers enjoy the game. That's the thing, the league has expanded this season and I think the top three clubs in the division scored 30, go 30 goals. It, it is difficult, isn't it, with the gulf it, and, and the difference between the clubs that have come up. As you see there, Celtic 9-0 against Hibernian, Dundee United 1-1 with Motherwell, Hamilton 3-1 against Aberdeen Rangers, what we've just seen, 14-0 against Glasgow Women, Hearts 3-1 winners against Partick Thistle and then Glasgow City 7-0 against Spartans. It's an indication to the clubs who've joined the league, the step up and also the work that's been done by those top three leading the way now over the summer. You know, you've got to invest. Um, I use the analogy sometimes, you know, you, you get a fiver given to you. You have to have a plan mm -hmm. in terms of how you're going to use that fiver. And um, the clubs need to invest more. Um, you know, the governing body need to invest more, the league needs to invest more, but certainly the top three, it looks as if it's going to be almost two leagues. Yeah. I think it'll be between those three clubs and then the rest will be vying, obviously, for those other positions. So, But uh, again, it's in its infancy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work being done, but there's still a long way to go. But, you know, from a Rangers perspective, the investment has been huge. Mm -hmm. That professional approach and creating an environment where players want to come and play for this club will be integral for the success moving forward. It certainly will. Well, up next for the Rangers women's team, it is Aberdeen away. Aberdeen were new to the league last season, but uh, they equipped themselves very well in their, their opening campaign in the top flight. And Rangers head up to Aberdeen. As you can see, there, that is a four o'clock kickoff on Sunday. It's Glasgow women against Dundee United, Hibernian against Hamilton, Motherwell Glasgow City, Partick Thistle against Celtic and Spartans against Hearts. Well, the B team were in action on Wednesday night in the SPFL Trust Trophy. They were up against Spartans and it took something very special from Alex Lowry to get the win. Let's hear his thoughts after that match. I thought we controlled large spells of the game. There was times where maybe we forced it a, a bit too much, but um, you see we kept going till the end and then I got the free kick that I hit quite well. The goal didn't move, so I can always take that as a, a good thing, but... Nah, we controlled large spells of the game, we should have been a bit more clinical in the first half with chances we had, but other than that, you can't complain, it's uh, a good win and we're through to the next round. And what was the messaging at half-time with having a few chances on goal but not getting the upper hand going into the, the half-time break? Um, it was to continue doing the things we were doing, we were doing everything up uh, good up until 
the, the final moment, which was frustrating, but that can happen in games of football. And to be fair, we kept going to the end, as you can see. And then when we got the goal, we kind of controlled the game a little bit more. The five, ten minutes before that was a bit of a basketball game. But other than that, I thought we were really good. And how important is it for yourself and the rest of the squad to keep that momentum and attacking threat when the, the scoreline is 0-0 at that point in time? Um, well, I've been here for quite a long time and that's always been the way we play. You need to just go for the game as much as you can. It, to be fair, in my opinion, we should have been one or two goals up in the first half, but credit to the boys, we kept going until we got the goal and then we seed the game out pretty well. For yourself to get the, the match winning goal as well, some strike from yourself, how pleased are you with that? <laughs> it's always good when it goes in the back of the net. Um, just make sure we don't show the first one. But how much are you and the rest of the squad looking forward to that fixture where you've already faced Dumbarton in this, this cup tournament before? Um, looking forward to it. We played them last year, I think, and um, we came out winners in that, so hopefully we can do it again. So Alex Lowry, the match winner for the B team there in that cup game against Spartans. Great to see him fit and firing again, isn't it, Shelley, after uh, what he managed to do initially with the first team last season and now he's obviously hoping to build on that this, this year. Yeah, and he's a talented player and it's just mapping out his journey for him. Mm -hmm. You know, does he come in um, to the first team? Does he get minutes there? Does he get playing time, you know, in the Lowland League? In the Lowland League which I think is good, but his his journey needs to be mapped out because for sure he's a talented player. He took his goal really, really mm -hmm. well there. Um, but I always think that you have to have a degree of patience with young players because their form, you know, it's not a linear process. Mm -hmm. it, it can be up and down. So it's a degree of patience from the player and, and from the club as well. What is it you like about Alex Lowry and just the way he carries himself on a football pitch? I mentioned the word unique, he, 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 but he, he is, he's different and He's got, he's a super confident young lad, mm -hmm. and I think the best players have that confidence. There's, there's a fine margin between being confident and being arrogant, yeah. and I think he has it just right. Mm -hmm. And the way he plays, I think that he plays with a bit of freedom, and I like that about footballers, where they've been given a bit of freedom to go and express themselves. And as I say, you have to bring the personality out. Football's one part where you're over you know the four pillars the psych part of the game mm -hmm. the technical part tactical part and the physical part as well but I, I think for me it's bringing your personality to that as well and he's got that he's a talented player mm -hmm. well the b team uh, also managed to overcome cowden beef at the weekend there were two goals down though and it took a, a bit of a fight back against morris ross's side but they did it to win by three goals to two and it was new signing connor young that came up with the winner let's hear what he had to say after that one Connor, you've been at the club now for a few weeks. What's it been like so far as, as you've integrated into the squad? Ah, it's been good. I think the going away to the Czech Republic helped me kind of settle in a bit, uh, being able to bond with the team and see what everyone's about. In that pre-season away to Prague, how was that period away with the squad and how important was it for you to sort of you know get used to them and um, get used to the style of football that we play here at Rangers? I think pre-season trips away are always good because you're always playing games and especially that one we were three games in three days so it was a good chance for me to settle in on the pitch as well and get used to how we we're going to be playing. Signing for the club, how did you know that that was the, the right move for you at this stage of your career? It was more, it had, Rangers had like a plan for me going forward and I think it just suited me like to a tee and it was a no-brainer really. And what were some of the additional attractions that drew you to, to Rangers as opposed to any other clubs that might have taken an interest? I think you look at the, you look at the size of the club for a start and then you look at the facilities about the place and it's just top class. And obviously playing in the Lone League this season with the, the rest of the B team boys, what's that period been like for you so far as you've completed quite a few games just now? It's, it's, been, a, it's been a decent start for us. I think we look back at the Civil game especially feeling like we could have done a lot better but We've let it on and kind of got that out of our system and we've done well the last two games. This is your first season in the Lone League as you've joined from Hibs, but a lot of the boys have had some exposure in the league so far. Have they given you any sort of advice before you kind of moved into the, the league campaign? They kind of just let me know that it's going to be a lot different to what academy football is like. It's going to be a lot more physical and won't be as technical as you're used to, but it should be fine. 
and what have been some of the, the challenges that you've sort of faced on the pitch just now which you're kind of like you know utilising in training moving forward? I think it's just getting used to the way that we play because it is different but I'm getting used to it now and settling in on the pitch. A few goals for yourself as well, how happy were you to, to get on the score sheet for a couple of games? I think when you score early it always helps you settle in, um, especially with the first one. I couldn't really miss so that helped a lot. And your goal at Cumbernauld Colts got quite the reaction as well. Is that probably one of your best goals you'd say so far? Aye, definitely. Kind of hit and hope I'd say. And moving forward this season, obviously one of the, the key points about the Lone League is it is great for youth development, exposure to senior football, first team football. Have you set yourself any targets for your own personal development moving forward? I think every season you want to be making a step closer to the, uh, to the first team here. And I think that's just what I want to do. And you know, being part of the, the rest of the B team squad, how have the boys been with you Aye, settling they've, in? They've all been brilliant, all been brand new. Cause, uh, I've had a few arguments on the pitch over the years with a few of them, but I've came in and they've all been brilliant women. Good to know that Connor Young's been made to feel welcome after <laughs> picking a few fights in previous seasons with his now new teammates. But Shelley, you were impressed by his finishing. He's a, he's a man of few words. He seems to do his talking on the pitch, though. <laughs> he looks a strong boy. Um, finishes different types of finishes, left foot, right foot. And uh, he's certainly got an eye for goal, but he looks a strong, strong mm -hmm. lad. And he will need that playing in the Lowland League as well. But that's the purpose of the team playing in the Lowland mm -hmm. League. You're playing against men that have been, you know, that have got a lot of experience. I, th I like the pyramid system because it gives you that carrot of getting mm -hmm. into the second division if you win the league, for example. So a lot of the other teams are investing. So that brings more talent to the league. And, you know, for me, it's a win-win situation, obviously, that being in involved in the Lowland League. But... In terms of his skill attributes, he looks a very, very good player. Mm, very good, competent uh, and confident player, it has to be said. Well, up next for the B team, it is Caledonian Braves. That's on Saturday at three o'clock. Coincidentally, the same time as Rangers are going to be taking on uh, St Johnson here at Ibrox. How do you look ahead to that one, Shelley? St Johnson come here, one one, uh, lost one so far this season. Um, what type of challenge do you expect from Callum Davidson's side? You know, well, the result that St Johnson got last week, last weekend, was really, really good because they scored late on mm -hmm. to win the game. And um, you know, in terms of recent performances and the tail end of last season, they didn't, they didn't finish well. Mm -hmm. um, but we, it's almost a brand new team that Callum Davison has put together. Um, it's done diff a lot of business, It's hasn't different it? yeah. personnel in there. He's got some loan players in. He's got some experience in there. So, I, again, you know, they will be full of confidence after last weekend getting that result because a lot of people have tipped them to be at the bottom mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. um, just because of the resource at the club. But I think Callum's brought in a lot of good players. Um, <laughs> Rangers coming into that game, I would expect a few changes. I think that rotational will keep coming. You have to to keep a freshness in the team. Um, it's going to be tough for St Johnston, you know, coming to Ibrox, especially after such a brilliant result, but also a brilliant performance. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I was actually thinking about this um, quite a lot this week in terms of how Rangers prepare for games because mm -hmm. I said it earlier, you're going to come up against teams, when, especially coming to Ibrox, that are going to sit in and be compact. So it's almost like you have to set up, you know, training game related practices that are 11 v 11 and one half of the pitch because... Break it down, yeah. Yeah, you've got to break it down, moving the ball quickly. So they will come here, Callum will probably play five at the back. Mm -hmm. So right away you know that you're going to be up against a robust defence. So it's about moving the ball quickly and trying to create spaces and finding those gaps with good movement to create. Mm -hmm. You've got to create and try and get on the score sheet early. You mentioned changes as well. There is two players now for each position. Is this the type of game you could see Morelos maybe getting thrown in from the start? Or do you think that, that Giovanni will still keep just reintroducing him slowly to the play? I, I think you've got to be careful when a player's been out for so long. Is it, you know, it's been March, probably about it was, yeah. almost six months, isn't it? Um, so you've got to be careful in terms of how you, you know, bleed them back into the team in terms of match minutes. 
Um, obviously got a goal last weekend, mm -hmm. Alfredo Morelos, but there's other players in there that I think could be rotated in and, and it won't adjust the style of play. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it should adjust the performance or, or impact the performance. So I think, and that's why at a club like this, you need two players per position because you need to freshen things up. One player who's still looking for his first start here at Rangers is Ben Davies. He's had two appearances off the bench and he's been talking to Nick Thompson about how he's settling in to life in Scotland. Ben, it's been a busy couple of weeks, your first few weeks in at Rangers. How have you found it? What's it been like? Uh, it's been it's been really good. Um, I think everyone's made it really easy to settle in. Um, it's the same every time when you go to a new club that um, the first sort of one, two, three weeks are like you just take it day by day and each day it gets, just gets a bit easier and you learn a bit more about your teammates and, and the area. So um, I'm like two and a half weeks in now, so it's, it's, um, it's getting to feel a lot more normal. So you come up obviously from Liverpool, massive club. Has it maybe surprised you in some ways just how big Rangers is and everything that goes around with Rangers? Yeah, um, I mean I went to the two friendlies to watch and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of fans there, you know. Um, that was an eye opener to start with and other than that I'm just learning day by day how how the fans kind of want, want to be involved and um, yeah, just going around Glasgow, been asked for a couple of pictures and stuff like that. Um, but it's nice to meet them all and you know, I want to obviously start off well and, and show them what I can do. Was it maybe an eye-opener in particular when you went to Livingston? Or when the team went to Livingston, there's 7,500 Rangers fans here, there's Rangers fans in the home end as well, and just this incredible demand and, and thirst that there is for this football club. Yeah, no, that was an eye-opener, that. Um, in fact, I think they had three stands. Yeah, for an away game, I think it's... You know, you, I've never seen that before, so I feel like that's probably quite normal, is it, up here? Um, no, the support's incredible and you can you can get a taste for that already. Um, you know, it means a lot to everyone and um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be a Rangers player. I know you kind of touched on it when, when you signed it first, but, but why was Rangers the place for you? Why did you think that's, that's exactly where I want to go and follow my career? I think that... I mean, there's, there's the obvious things. It's it's Rangers Football Club. It's it's enormous, and the history of it's incredible, which I'm I'm trying to learn. But there's there's obviously so much of it that it's going to take a bit of time. Um, but I think also that I feel like my career has been okay so far. I've been on the move quite a lot. I've had quite a lot of loan spells. So to to come up here and have a fresh start and kind of be a part of something hopefully very special. Um, I kind of want to make this a home for the next few years and um, go from there. The fact that, I mean, you look in the dressing room, there's guys like Tav, who's, who's been here forever, you know, connor has been here the last four years, has signed again. There's a lot of guys that have been here for, you know, a good couple of seasons. Was that something you looked at and thought, well, I could be the same, I could then have this place to come and, and settle in for the next few years? Yeah, exactly that. Um, I think, obviously, like you say, there's, a, there's players here that have been on a long time and they've really helped me to, to settle in so far, but I want to then hopefully be here for a long time as well and then help future players settle in and um, we're a long way off that yet. Um, but that was kind of a draw that I wanted to, to be involved in and, and kind of make a new home. The experience you've got, where you've played, the stage that you're now at in your career, you're obviously kind of hopefully at your, at your peak. But you know, at the stage where you're looking, well, I can pass on my knowledge to some of the younger players. I'm thinking, you know, you've got Leon King in the dressing room at a young up and coming centre half. Club have obviously got high hopes from this. He's someone you've maybe had conversations with or, or, or looked to take under your wing going forward. Yeah, I think um, you know I've only, I've only been in the door a couple of weeks, so I don't, I'm not one to come in and um, really get involved with everything like that straight away. But certainly over the time that I'm here, I'll be, I'll be looking to pass on and help, and I'll be looking at other players that are already here to, to help me learn about the the club, the league, because it's obviously new. Um, and yeah, I think in a team you've got to help each other. Are you prepared maybe for what's going to come? Because it's, I guess being a Rangers player is quite, it's quite or you know, being an old firm player, it's quite different because in Scotland in particular, you have so much of the ball and when you've got to defend, it's maybe few and far between times during the game. Is it, you know, you're ready for that level of concentration? Yeah, I think, I think that's the thing. I think concentration and being, you know, the bank begins where you don't, have an awful lot to do but it could be the most important thing in the game and I think um, something Connor's really good at and I'm sure that if I, if I
play with Connor and he'll keep me right and I'll try and keep him right as well. Um, because as you say, I've got quite a, quite a bit of experience and I know how crucial like them, the transition to other parts of the game are. So, um, yeah, I'm learning, looking to learn off, off Connor and the other defenders. Are you excited by what you've seen so far from the team? Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I feel like the, the standard in, in training and um, especially in the, in the pre-season games, the, the technical ability on the ball, I think it's been really good. So I'm um, looking to use these years to improve. Ben Davies looking to get his Rangers career very much up and running. And you liked a lot of what he had to say there, didn't you, Shelley? Very impressive interview. Um, and sometimes when you hear players, you think they say all the right things, yeah. but he's got experience. I think I love the fact that he says he's still learning about the club, which is so important because you've got to embrace that when you come to a new club. He's identified that he's had a few loan moves. He seems as if he wants to settle at this club, which is brilliant. Um, and I, I think as well, he spoke about as a defender coming to a club that's going to more often than not dominate games with possession. He spoke about turnover mo moments in the game and transitional moments about being focused. So he's already got that little bit of awareness in terms of what you need as a defender when you play with a club like Rangers. So I, I liked his interview. Like to see him obviously getting more minutes to see you yeah. know his potential um, and you know potentially having that partnership, be mentioned Connor, Connor Golson yeah. there. You know, obviously I, I think it's quite difficult sometimes, you know, you look at other centre backs coming in and the partnerships, I always like the balance of having a left sided one and a right sided one, especially when you're looking to build the play a lot of the time. It's different out of possession because you're solely thinking about defending, but when you're in possession of the ball, I think it's good to have a left-sided centre back there as opposed to having two, two right-footed players. So balance is, is key in any team. Yeah, we'll be wait, waiting to see if he makes uh, his first start for the club in the game against St Johnston on Saturday. That is next up for Giovanni Van Bronckhorst's side. Ibrox, Saturday, 3 o'clock. Let's run down then the full weekend's Premiership fixtures. As you can see, Aberdeen take on Motherwell, Livingston against Hibernian, Rangers against St Johnston and St Mirren against Ross County. On Sunday, it is Kilmarnock, the early kickoff against Celtic, and then Heart of Midlothian against Dundee United. Um, well, that's pretty much all we've got time for. I say that's all we've got time for. We've been blethering on for, for, for a fair period of time now, Shelley, but I hope you've enjoyed your first appearance on the preview show. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the weather for the lovely <laughs> weekend. Are you at a game this weekend? Um, yes, I will be. Mm -hmm. um, not sure which games yeah. as yet, but I'll definitely be. That's the thing, be. when you're a person in your position, you can basically pick and choose, can't you? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll be here at Ibrox. The Fan Zone is back once again for the game against St Johnston from around about midday, 12.30. Plenty going on over there. So if you do happen to be coming to the game, um, then pop over and see us. Uh, also, it'll be on live on Rangers TV. And I think that fly that was in Thomas Buffel's <laughs> video interview last week has managed to make its way over here to the studio. Um, but yeah, like I say, the, the game will obviously be on Rangers TV as well from about 2.30 onwards. For the time being, from Shelley and myself, thank you for watching. Have a great weekend.